Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be talking about owning properties together with someone else. Now, this could be done through two main methods. The first one, which is the most common among matrimonial assets, is to hold a property jointly with your spouse through this mechanism, what we know as joint tenancy. Now, there is a rather unique uh, characteristics about joint tenancy because of the rights of survivorship. Now, the other way how to hold a property jointly with someone else is to do it through tenancy in common. Now, in today's 10 minutes video, I'm just going to summarize these two main uh, ways of holding properties jointly and the various pros and cons for each mechanism. Enjoy! If the plan is to ensure that the property is kept within the family, and to ensure that this plan is not going to be upset in an unfortunate event where one of the joint owners passes away, you should own the property under joint tenancy. Joint tenancy is the most common way for families to own matrimonial assets jointly. Now, it forms the basic fundamental for families to ensure that the family doesn't get displaced in an unfortunate event if one of the spouses actually pass away. Now, this is because the fundamental of joint tenancy lies in the rights of survivorship. This means if one of the joint tenants passes away, his shares automatically goes to his remaining tenants. In this sense, even in the absence of a will. For example, if a husband and wife owns a property in joint tenancy, and if the husband passes away, his shares in the property will be passed on to the wife, who is the surviving joint owner, without express mentioned. In this case, the wife will become the sole owner of this property. In the event where more than two persons own the property in joint tenancy, then the deceased person's shares will be divided equally amongst the remaining surviving tenants. In joint tenancy, it is assumed that the joint tenants have equal shares in the property. For example, the grandparents and adult children own the property in joint tenancy. It is assumed that each of the persons will have 25% shares in the property. In the event, one of the joint tenants passes away, his shares will be distributed equally amongst the remaining joint tenants. In this case, each of the surviving joint tenants will now own 33.3% shares. The rights of survivorship overrides any will. If you own a property in joint tenancy, you will realize this property will be excluded from your personal assets and hence you cannot will it to someone else. In joint tenancy, the last surviving owner will take all. There are four unities in the concept of joint tenancy. They are a unity of possession, where the joint owner owns the whole property and none has exclusive rights over any parts of the property. There is a unity of interest, where the parties are assumed to own the property in equal shares. There is a unity of time, where parties must enter into joint tenancy at the same time. Lastly, the unity of title. To the outside world, these parties own the property wholly, together. This means no parties can sell the property without the permission of the other. Next, we are going to look at tenancy in common. Unlike joint tenancy, tenancy in common allows an individual to hold a property jointly with others, but with clear distinct shares. This means the rights of survivorship does not apply for tenancy in common. The joint owners can will, transfer, or sell their shares to someone else, even without the permission of the joint owners. In another words, if a family owns their home tenancy in common, one party can sell off the shares and risk displacing the family. Tenancy in common is one of the best forms of co-ownership, where the intention is to allow parties to have clear, distinct shares such as between investors and siblings, etc. 
There is only one unity for tenancy in common, which is the unity of possession. This means all parties do not own any part of the property, exclusive to themselves, and the parties cannot sue each other for trespassing. Tenancy in common allows for clear distinct ownership of the joint property. This means the concept of rights of survivorship does not apply in tenancy in common. Now this is one of the clearest way to allow individuals to hold clear distinct shares. This basically means that all parties can freely transfer, will or even sell their part of the share to someone else even without the permission of the others. Now in this case for tenancy in common, all these parties do not need to enter into the equation at the same time and they do not need to leave the relationship at the same time as well. Now this is clearly different from the concept of joint tenancy where the unity of time exists. Now that you have seen the two types of co-ownership, what are really the pros and cons? Now let's start with joint tenancy. The beauty of joint tenancy really lies in the rights of survivorship. This means none of the co-owners would be able to sell off his or her shares separately without the knowledge or agreement of the other party. For example, in a spouse relationship, none of the spouse will be able to dispose of or will his asset away to another person without the knowledge and consent of his spouse. Despite this, there will be various drawbacks as well for joint tenancy. Now, because of the four unities, it is seen as one title and one ownership. This means if unfortunately one of the joint tenants are declared bankrupt, the entire asset is going to be affected by creditors' claim. Tenants in common, on the other hand, allows for clear distinct ownership. This means each of these parties have got clear separate shares in the property. This is probably the clearest and most straightforward form of co-owning a property together with someone else. This means if one of the joint tenants become bankrupt, only his or her part of the shares will be affected and subjected to the creditor's claim, not the entire property. Joint owners can change the ownership from joint tenancy to tenancy in common and also the other way around. The parties only need to serve to each other a unilateral declaration. Now, severing joint tenancy to tenancy in common usually results in equal shares. Now, unless otherwise proven or as determined by court order in cases commonly seen in divorce. On the other hand, tenancy in common can also be changed to joint tenancy. However, the parties would need to ensure that all parties have equal shares before this conversion. These normally will be handled by the lawyers. Now let's explore a little further how these different manners of joint ownership will affect the will by the deceased. In this example, husband, wife and son owns a property under joint tenancy. This would mean that the three parties would be assumed to have equal shares in this property. Although the husband may have the intention to will part of the property to his mother after his passing, he will not be able to do so because of the rights of survivorship. This means any property held in joint tenancy will be disregarded in will. In this instance, it means regardless of will, the deceased husband's shares will be distributed equally to the surviving owners, which is the wife and son. This will result in the surviving owners having equal shares. In this case, the wife and son both owns 50% of the property now. If the wife, who is the mother, also subsequently passes away, that will make the son a sole remaining owner, inheriting all. In this case, we say that the survivor takes all. On the contrary, if the husband, wife and son owns equal shares tenancy in common, it would mean that the husband is free to will his shares of the property to his mother because there is no rights of survivorship in tenancy in common. This means the husband's mother will enter into the joint ownership with the other owners. 
inheriting her son's shares. In such cases, if one of the joint owners wants to sell off his or her shares, the immediate family can end up being displaced. Let's take a look at another example. If a pair of siblings own a property in joint tenancy, even if one of the siblings who is married with children passes away, the surviving sibling will inherit the whole property. If this pair of siblings held the property tenancy in common instead, and one of the siblings who is married with children passes away, he may will his shares to someone else, or in the absence of a will, the deceased sibling's shares will then be distributed according to the Intestate Succession Act in Singapore. Under intestacy law in Singapore, if the deceased person left behind a spouse and children, his shares in property will be divided equally amongst his wife and children. In this case, if there are two children, the wife will effectively own 25% of the total shares in the property and each child will inherit 12.5%. In this case, the brother's family will now co-own the property with his sister, tenancy in common. If the deceased brother is married without children and with a living parent, then his shares will be divided equally among his wife and living mother. The wife and living mother will then each inherit 25% of the total shares of the property. Now the property is held tenancy in common with the wife and mother owning 25% each and the sister remaining tenants in common holding 50% shares. In another scenario, if the deceased brother is not married, have no children, and have no living parents, his shares in the property will then be inherited by his siblings. Assuming the deceased brother has a sister whom he is co-owning the property with and a younger brother, the siblings will then inherit his shares equally. Now the property will be held tenancy in common by the younger brother who owns 25% shares and the sister who now owns 75% shares after the inheritance. By now, you should be able to distinguish between the two manners of co-ownership and how these different manners of ownership is going to potentially affected by the will of the deceased. See you for the next chapter.